whilst we've spoken so much about the certificate of sponsorship in many other videos it's also important for you to understand that once you have this certificate of sponsorship it's important for you to understand what the next step in the process would be and the next step if you've been issued with a three-year visa like i was the next step in the process along the way would be to renew your visa or to extend it if you still wish to remain in the uk legally so stay tuned to my channel as i take you through a step-by-step -step guide and telling you how you can do this and ensure that your stay in the uk remains legal welcome to on the cusp with daphne a place where inspiration meets evolution and this video is the first in a three-part series where I tell you about how to renew or extend your three-year visa, be it a skilled worker visa, a tier two visa, a health and care worker visa, whatever you want to refer to it as. Names have changed so much over the recent years for visas, how you can renew or extend that. Number two, how you can, when you reach the five-year mark, how you can apply for leave to remain in the UK legally and have settlement right and become a permanent resident. I've skipped this middle number because it's actually a step which is necessary in order for you to undertake number three. So this is the life in the UK test that you need to undertake in order for you to be legible to sit to apply for your indefinite leave to remain. So in chronological order, the videos are how to extend or renew your visa in the UK, how to pass your life in the UK test, as well as how to apply for indefinite leave to remain, the steps of which I have taken recently and I'd like to share my experiences and tips with you. So when your time comes, it's a seamless process for you, which is the whole point of the channel. Consider subscribing to the channel, like this video and comment below. I look forward to our meaningful engagements. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Daphne. I bring you insights on job opportunities in the UK, support thereof, immigration related matters, health, well-being, and all things fitness. Stay tuned to the channel and subscribe to the channel before you swipe left. What you really want to do here is to swipe right. Shall we get right into the business of the day how to renew or extend your uk visa uk tier 2 visa skilled worker visa stroke healthcare worker visa any of those i think first things first let's talk about the eligibility criteria there is a criteria that you need to meet in order for your application to be considered for you to extend your uk skilled worker visa stroke health and care worker visa or tier two visa. In order for you to be able to extend or renew that, there is a certain criteria you need to meet. The first requirement or the first prerequisite stroke eligibility criteria being that you have the same job as when you were given permission, your, your previous permission to enter or to stay in the UK. That is requirement number one. Number two is that your job is on the same source code as when you were given permission to enter or stay in the UK. That is criteria number two for you to be able to renew or extend your UK tier two visa, health and care worker visa, or a skilled worker visa as it's often referred to as. The other important criteria you need to meet is that you are still with the same employer who issued you with your current certificate of sponsorship, which means you cannot walk away with an employer certificate of sponsorship and go and work elsewhere and when you apply you say you are with the employer that issued you with your current certificate of sponsorship perhaps you are working somewhere where you were not issued with a certificate of sponsorship so that's a big tip for you to note stay with whoever issues you a certificate of sponsorship or if you do switch jobs make sure you are issued with a certificate of sponsorship so you're able to renew your job going forward when this time comes to extend or to renew your uk skilled worker visa uk visa health and care worker visa and the last requirement is that you meet the salary requirements which is often not a big deal in many instances you will 
by virtue of the pay scales for these categories, you will meet the salary requirements. It's unlikely this is a criteria you will not meet if you are with that employer that issued you with a certificate of sponsorship. Because remember, in order for a certificate of sponsorship to be issued, you need to be earning a minimum. There's a particular salary that's been set by the government for you to earn. So there's no way you can get to this point and find that you do not qualify because then you wouldn't have been issued with a certificate of sponsorship in the first place because you do not meet the salary requirements. So this should be the least of your concerns, but just double check it in any case and check what the current numbers are at the time when you apply. Something worth noting is that your dependent partner or children can apply at the same time as you or they can apply at any other time. Do note as well that it's during this time that you're advised not to travel out of the country during this time when your application is being processed. Otherwise, your application stands the risk of being withdrawn if you travel during this time. So learn these things early, plan your life around them. If you have to travel, perhaps travel before you apply for these things or wait until this process is finalized for you to travel and you have all the necessary documentation back because it will make your entry into the UK much more easier. Let's talk about the cost of extending or renewing your UK health and care worker visa, tier two visa or skilled worker visa. Let's talk about the cost of renewing that. The health and care worker visa seems to be the one that comes in as the cheapest, if I were to call it that. If you renew for a period of less than three years, you are going to pay £247. But if you're going to be issued with more than three years, if you're going to be applying for a period of more than three years to extend your UK health and care worker visa, you can expect to pay £479. I'm still not sure why you'd want to apply for more than three years when you are already at the three year mark. It's in essence a waste of money because all you need really is two years in order for you to qualify for your indefinite leave to remain. So applying for more than three years sounds almost senseless and I'm hoping nobody is doing it. If you're thinking of doing it, don't do it. Just apply for three years because seriously, even after the three years, all you need is two years in order to get to the five year mark where you can qualify for your indefinite leave to remain. I hope this is making sense. And back to the fees, these fees were not until recently with the advent of COVID. Prior to that, I paid, I renewed my visa, just, I extended my visa just before COVID started and I paid way, way more, close to 1,500 pounds, an issue which I raised concerns with my employer and I was informed they were not able to pay for me. I needed to pay for my own visa. I needed to pay for my own health surcharge. So I continue to raise these issues with HR, with my manager who told me the budget for the unit was not catering for such, but I took it up with HR, upon which I got told that HR could pay for my human resources, could pay for my surcharge, health surcharge, but I still needed to pay for my visa, which was welcome news, I thought, I felt it was meeting each other halfway. However, it didn't come without its conditions. I was made to sign a document that said I could not leave my trust for a period of three years. Mind you, I wasn't even planning to leave in any case. So I did see that as a win-win as a and did not have any issues signing that document as I had no intentions of leaving in the next two to three years. So it was okay. In the end, I just paid for my visa. At the time when I applied for my visa, it was not so cheap. I spent, I think I paid 479, I paid 479 and the rest of the money was paid for by my employer, HR, for the health surcharge, which ran into more than a thousand, on condition that I did not leave my employment for the next three years or so. I signed documentation um, relating to this. So that suited me just fine. And I saw that as a win-win situation. So it's important sometimes to speak up, to ask what the options are. And in a very diplomatic way, challenge some of the things you're being told. Because initially, initially, I got told that I needed to apply for my own certificate of sponsorship. I thought it was like 20 pounds or something. Initially, I was a bit ignorant and I was like, oh yeah, it's okay. And she said to me, the HR lady said to me, bring your credit card with you. I was like, oh yeah, sure. Thinking in my head is only 
20 pounds or something. I, although I questioned it, I thought perhaps it's just an amount I can afford to pay just to renew. And when, it's, when we sat down on the day with the two other HR ladies, the one lady was in training, the other one was, that was her thing, her bread and butter. She said to me the amount to pay for me to be issued with a certificate of sponsorship was 3,000 pounds, was a cool 3,000 pounds. Excuse me? I could have swiped my card, it would have gone through, but excuse me, I'm not paying 3,000 for you to retain me. Who needs who? I mean, there's another hospital just next door that needs my services desperately and they'll be willing to pay for these things. The conversation ended so quickly, I didn't make it a secret that I was going to explore my options and I went straight to my manager's office to find out if this is something I'm supposed to be paying for. There are so many other hospitals. At least I've got two near me within a three minute walk of both where I can be hired on walking in. So I was like, are you sure this is how it works? So it didn't end there. I sent an email to somebody who'd helped me previously within human resources that moved department. I just double checked this with them because it didn't sound right. And I thought who else is being exploited in this manner? I don't think it was a direct exploitation. I still want to believe that person that asked me to pay 3000 pounds did not know what they were doing. They were new to the job because in no time at all, within a week or so, I got another very casual email from her. So oh, Daphne, just to let you know, as if there was never a discussion prior, just to let you know, the trust pays for your certificate of sponsorship. You don't have to pay for it. Excuse me. This is what I was telling you all along. So don't take anything at face value where it concerns you having to pay for something. Do your research. Although I didn't know enough on the matter, I took it for granted they'll be paying for it. When she said pay, I thought it was a small amount, like 20 pounds. It turned out it was <laughs> something else. There's so many things I can think of doing with 3,000 pounds than to pay for a certificate of sponsorship. So be vigilant, be aware, speak to other people. Um, at the time, I mean, where I'm working, so many people are so settled. They've already been in the country for so many years. So when you talk to them about these things, they have no clue what you're talking about. But surround yourself with people who know this process, who are familiar with these things. But what helped me was knocking at the right doors, like speaking to human resources. At a senior level, that person that helped me previously was now promoted at a senior level, but I found their email in my contact list and sent them an email to verify this. He didn't get back to me directly, but I am assuming he spoke to the junior person new in the role and she got then got back to me with the good news. That's how the story ends. So in short, the fees currently as we speak for health and care worker visa for a period of less than three years, you'll pay 247. If you're wanting to apply for more than three years, you will pay 479. For other skilled worker visa, the fees are slightly different. I'm going to link the government website for each one, the UK health and care worker visa, the skilled worker visa, and see how much you can be expected to pay. Documentation you'll be required to provide is uh, things such as proof of identity. You'll be obviously needed to provide a current passport, valid passport, and some form of identity will be needed. And I'll attach the information as to what information you need exactly. So human resources is one department you're going to be working very closely with during this process as they are the ones that are going to provide you with the certificate of sponsorship reference number for the employer. The employer, the organization as it is, has got their own um, certificate of sponsorship license number. They're also going to provide you with documentation that you are working, proof of your salary, your income to confirm that you're still working for them. You're going to, you are going to provide your own passport, obviously. So be sure to verify the name of the employer is spelled correctly on your certificate of sponsorship, their reference number, just double check with them that they've provided you with the correct details because this is an application you are going to make for yourself. They don't renew for you, but you renew for yourself and make the payment yourself. So we've talked about the eligibility criteria. We've talked about the cost. You'll notice that this is not a process that depends solely on you. 
So start your application process early. There are also periods of times within which you cannot apply because the Home Office deems that too early to submit your application. So go on the government's website, which I'll link here, and see how soon or how early can you start applying. Familiarize yourself with that. And at the same time, don't leave it until it's too late. Because as you can see, sometimes you might send an email to HR and that person is on holiday or is on sickness. But if you do it early enough, you will be notified when you don't get a response from the person or when you get an auto reply to know that you need to seek advice elsewhere and find out who else can help you in their absence. So if you leave this process till too late, you might find yourself at so many panic stations and that's the last thing you want to do. Basically, start as early as you are allowed to start. So suppose your employer has provided you with a COS, have provided you with the right reference number, they've confirmed that you've been working with them or working for them you now need to upload your documents on the respective website which the home office will send you the link for when you start your application online it will direct you to this website where you are going to upload your documents big tip here is to upload your documents one at a time don't pile them together if it's 15 pages don't pile them and try to make them one document you can upload them one at a time and actually name them so they're easy to find. I learned this experience almost the hard way when I was applying for my leave to remain. Story for another day. Point is, upload your documents one at a time, single page at a time. Once you're happy with the upload, once you're happy with everything else, you will then need to book an appointment. Because remember, these are digital documents you've uploaded. They still need to be verified by a person where you will need to take your physical documents, original documents with you to walk into this appointment to have your documents verified as you've uploaded them. Very important, obviously, to keep the details of this appointment, the time to be on time. And there is a very specific page, which I'll link here. There's a specific page with a QR code, the letter, the appointment letter, basically with a QR code, which you can't seem to get past anyone without it. So be sure to take that QR code letter with you or to print the QR code that you receive upon submission of your uploads. It's a confirmation that you've uploaded, confirmation that you've booked your appointment. Beware that this is a third party where you're going to have your documents verified. For the appointment, you need to pay a fee as well. I will link them in the description box because these fees keep changing all the time so you can see what the latest fee is. Just as a side note, this is the same appointment at which you will have photos of you taken for your biometrics to complete your biometrics. So just a little heads up is to look presentable and be ready to have your photos taken, which will be on your biometric residence permit. Once you've been to this appointment, you then wait for an email, confirmation email that says your documents have been received, you have submitted your application successfully. And at this point, you are basically waiting for a conclusion to know whether your application was successful or not. You will then receive a new BRP, a new biometric card once your application is successful and this is delivered to you via a courier typically and it's a document for which you need to be home and sign for it. If you're going to be at work, you can give them your work address for them to come and deliver at your place of work so you can present a form of ID to say, yes, I'm Daphne and I'm receiving my document. So this is almost was the final stages of your application. Needless to say, you then need to inform your employer and send proof of this BRP. Some might ask you to present it in person so they can make a copy for themselves. Some are happy for you to upload a copy and send it through as I did do because they're able to verify this with the Home Office anyway, based on the details of what you provide them with. Of greater importance is to note that once you've reached this step, you cannot hang on to the old biometric you can end up being charged a penalty of up to a thousand pounds for keeping your old biometric card. What you need to do is to snip it in two pieces and post it back to their home office. Obviously it's destroyed. I think it's just a control thing to keep less biometric cards in circulation, BRP cards in circulation. 
So the ones that are in circulation are the valid ones. I think it's just a safety measure and a control measure on the part of the Home Office. And one bonus tip I'd like to throw into this video is to make you aware of the number of days you can spend outside of the UK whilst on this visa. Because when it comes to renewal, those are the kind of things that get looked at. So even if you're on maternity leave, for example, in the NHS, you can even get maternity leave for up to a year. Whilst that is something that you qualify for in terms of your work benefits, find out how it impacts your immigration status whilst you're on this visa. So if it means that you need to spend an X amount of days in the UK, because this changes all of the time, I'm going to ask you to look at the government's website and see how many days you need to be, you can be outside of the country for without impacting your visa. This changes all the time. I cannot give you a number right now, but just be aware that there are those kind of conditions you need to adhere to in order for your visas to be renewed, to be extended, in order for you to be deemed as still being legally within the confines of your visa restrictions. These are things people typically don't talk about and you learn about them the hard way. So I hope this has been insightful and I hope you have subscribed to the channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and share the video. Comment below. I look forward to our meaningful engagements. Thanking you for remaining on the cusp with Daphne, a place where inspiration meets evolution. Let's continue to evolve on this journey of self-discovery and growth. Lovely to have you on the channel. Remain on the cusp with Daphne, a place where inspiration meets evolution. Thank you for staying tuned. See you on the next one. Light and love.